for completely preventable reasons. So if we can prevent them, that's a, a point of optimism. One of the things that I've learned this summer is that there is a wealth of information available throughout the region for climate providers, and it can be used by the Red Cross to save lives. Unfortunately, the way I see it right now, a lot of that information is falling on deaf ears. I would say the Red Cross is pretty enthusiastic at using climate information. Uh, in the Pacific region, it's very, very underutilized. It's a very new concept. Decision makers, uh, they really want to use the climate information. They just were never exposed to it before, so they just they don't have the capacity to use it. So there's an interest to use it, they just don't know how. I think that uh, the level of enthusiasm is actually quite high, surprisingly, at the Red Cross. It's surprising because they're not really using forecasts, so it's kind of you know, mind-boggling at times, like, so they're so enthusiastic about it, they see all the benefits that, could, that they could reap from using these, but they're not using them. So that really makes you think, what are the reasons, what are the constraints for not being able to use them? The clear miscommunication between the people who design tools and the people who use them. Um, being on the humanitarian side of things, it was very, very obvious the need for them to have um, tools that were very clear, very easy to access. Really make the weather information that they make for the International Federation of the Red Cross as simple as possible. And I've observed that people really don't have a clue at all of what those maps mean, from what the legend is, from what the color scales mean, all that. There's a high level of interest within the Red Cross to obtain more specific climate change information as it relates to the local level. However, this climate information can't be applied unless it can be used at a localized level within the communities that they work in. So as you're all gathering to make your decisions about how to use climate information in the future, it's so important to remember that the people that are being affected the most have the smallest voice in the problem. One of the biggest challenges by far is a shortage of interdisciplinary workers. In an age of increasingly intricate global problems, we cannot afford the arrogance of thinking any one field could solve any problem. The structures of the Red Cross haven't really caught up with our knowledge of climate information. So while there's a knowledge that we are obligated to act, we know that things are happening and we know that we need to respond to them, there is just a lack of the capacity at the institutional level to do that. So we really need to think about connecting climate information with specific actions um, at the humanitarian level. The main obstacle for the Red Cross right present to use climate information was probably that the information that exists is a bit too technical and it is just there waiting for them to find a use. What they need to do is they need to tell the providers of this information what the use is going to be and actually have the information tailored to wait through the ways they're going to use it. Whatever we do to address climate change and to deal with climate variability, has to focus on people and it has to focus on empowering people.